Hello folks, uh, back for another examples now. Tonight I'll show you some ways to use geometric series uh, to find the discrete time Fourier transform, the kinds of sequences where that works. Again, just a quick reminder where we start from is the definition of the discrete time Fourier transform. X of e to the j omega is the sum as n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of x of n e to the minus j omega n. And so it's, seeing the sum here, it's not hard to imagine that for certain sequences we're going to get real or, or get geometric uh, sums out of this. So let's see how that works out with our, our first example. Let's say what if x of n is equal to say one-sixth to the n u of n. So this would be, again, never a bad thing to make a quick sketch of what the signal looks like to remind ourselves. Because of this u of n, this signal will be zero for all negative time, right? Because whenever n is zero, n is negative, this term will be zero. And then uh, at n equals zero, it will be one. It would be height one. And then at one, it would be uh, one-sixth. So this is not quite to scale. And then one thirty-sixth, and one over two sixteen, and so on. And it'll keep going like that. So it'll be slowly dying out, but never actually go directly to zero, or exactly to zero. So let's see how we, we use the definition of the Fourier transform to find x1 of e to the j omega. So I say, well, this is the sum as n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of, uh, if I put this in for x1 of n, we say one-sixth to the n u of n e to the minus j omega n. Now I say, well, this u of n just means I can get rid of the negative half of the sum. So the first thing I can do to simplify this Let's just say that, well, all the terms in the sum for n less than 0 are going to be 0. So let me simplify the sum to look like this. And for all the positive values of n, this term here, this u of n, will just be 1. All right, so I have, have something that looks like this, which is getting close to a geometric series, but not quite, because I have two things here. To get a ge true geometric series, or to make it really obvious, I want to get it in terms of just one term raised to the nth power, the sum of something like alpha to the n. But I can use powers of exponents, right? If I write this, I can really think of this term here as e to the minus j omega to the n. If I do that, I can combine the bases of the exponents, right? If I have two things raised to the same power that are multiplied together like this, I can combine their bases in both to the n. And so how this helps me is we say, well, I'm looking for an infinite geometric series. Let me slide this up the screen a bit. And so if I do that, as I've shown here, I can say, well, remember that the classic geometric, the infinite geometric series, sort of break this out in a new color just to, this is sort of our, our uh, I don't have the flashback music, but this is our, our flashback to remind us that the infinite geometric series right, says that the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of alpha to the n is 1 over 1 minus alpha as long as the magnitude of alpha is less than 1. Right, so looking at, at this version up here, we say, well, this whole thing here is my alpha. So I have one-sixth e to the minus j omega. So if I want to keep going now with my, my original problem, I can say I can write this as x1 of e to the j omega, where omega is my 
discrete time frequency value of 1 over 1 minus 1 sixth e to the minus j omega. And this works because the magnitude of 1 sixth e to the j omega, this thing up here, This, this alpha has a magnitude less than 1, because the magnitude of this part is 1 sixth, and the magnitude of e to the minus j omega is 1. So this is my uh, discrete time Fourier transform for this simple exponential sequence. And again, a, a good reminder, this is an infinite geometric series, not because of the amplitude, but because of the length. Because this goes on forever, or equivalently because the upper limit of the sum is infinity, that the sum has an infinite number of terms in it, is why I use the infinite geometric series. The natural question is, well, when would I use the finite geometric series? Maybe it's first good to, to remind ourselves what that is. So again, the finite geometric series series says that if I have the sum As n goes from 0, instead of going to infinity, I have some upper limit n. So it's a finite set of terms, but the same form, alpha to the n. This works out to be 1 minus alpha to the n plus 1, all over 1 minus alpha. And this is true because there are a finite number of terms in this. This is true for every alpha. I don't need to worry about that alpha less than 1 part. So let's see where this would come into play or where we would use this to find a Fourier transform. So if we look at a problem just a little different than that one I showed you a minute ago. So here's our second example. x2 of n is going to be 1 sixth to the nth power. And then we'll use some unit steps to make it finite in length. So let's say if it's u of n minus u of n minus 4. So this will be a rectangular pulse that starts at 0 and turns off, well it's off at 4. When n equals 4, both of these terms are 1 and it goes away. So again, doing a quick sketch of this sequence. Again, it starts at 0 with height 1. It'll be 0 for negative time. And then moving forward, 1 over, so 1, 1 over 36, and then this last little value here at 3 would be 1 over 216. And then everything beyond this is actually exactly equal to 0. So it's different than the example I just did in that it is identically 0 as I go further out because of this second unit step. Right, this piece here says to multiply this exponential sequence by 1 from n equals 0 up until n equals 3, but once I get to n equals 4, this term is always 0 again. So, how does this work out for the Fourier transform? Well, again, we just start from the definition. I sort of say it's going to be the sum as n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, just literally copying the definition for now, x2 of n e to the minus j omega n. But now I look at this and say I don't need all these terms. I only need to include the values of x2 that are not equal to 0. So if I do that, I'll say this is the sum as n goes from 0 to 3 of 1 sixth to the n e to the minus j omega n. So it's similar to what we had a minute ago, but this piece up here, this upper limit, is not infinity anymore. Right, so that's what's different. It's now a finite geometric sum because it has a finite upper limit on it, a finite number of terms. But these are the only terms I need to include because x2 of n is 0 for everything before n equals 0 and everything after n equals equal or after n equals 4. But from here the story gets pretty similar. We say, well, that, if I want to make this thing a geometric sum, it'd be easier to see my way to the right answer if I bring all these together and use again same property of exponents I can say this is 1 6 times e to the minus j omega to the n. 
And now if I just flash back to my page for a second, flash back a page, I say, well, it looks just like this, where now my upper limit is 3, so I'm going to have alpha to the 4 as this extra term in the numerator. Right? So how that works out is I get 1 minus 1 sixth alpha to the minus j 4 omega. Now there's something wrong about that. That whole alpha is to the, the fourth. Let me uh, take some pieces of that back. So it's one sixth e to the minus j omega. The whole thing. This is my alpha to the fourth, all over one minus one sixth e to the minus j omega. And that's really all I can do with this one. I can't simplify it using some of the tricks we saw with rectangular pulses because it it has uh, not equal magnitudes. So there's no point in taking this further. So that's my my Fourier transform for this short finite length exponential pulse. And again, I'm using the finite geometric series because this upper limit is not infinity. Okay, talk to you next time.